Rivenhall woman has now established that one of the treponemal diseases was already in Europe. The significance of this particular individual is that we can be reasonably sure that this is a case of treponemal disease and the radiocarbon date firmly indicates that it predates the Columbus voyage to the Americas. So this means that uh, it proves that treponemal disease was present in Europe prior to the voyage of Columbus. And Rivenhall woman has one more secret to reveal. The assumption has always been that she was probably a local girl, born and raised in East Anglia. But the results of her tooth analysis bring a major surprise. OK, Simon, so uh, where do you think this, uh, this person may have come from? Well, I mean, I, I expect she'll basically be local to Rivenhall. It's, it's a country churchyard which is set aside for burials, burials of parishioners. So I, I would expect her to have grown up locally. Mm. Well, I think you might be in for a bit of a surprise with the results that we've got. Really? Well, as you know, we looked at two teeth. We looked at this, uh, the first molar, which forms in early childhood, and then we looked at this wisdom teeth, which obviously forms quite a lot later on in, in, in later childhood. Now, even the, 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 taking the, the first molar first, the one in early childhood, we came up with this value of about nearly minus nine for this tooth. Really? Now, if we look at the UK, the whole of the UK varies from about minus five in the West to about minus eight and a half in certain little pockets. Right. And that's really about as negative as you get. But, of course, uh, what was really even more interesting was that when we looked at the wisdom tooth, so later in childhood, we find an even more negative value, actually a very negative value amongst amongst the, the lowest values that we've actually had for anybody that we've looked at. We get this figure of nearly minus 12. So we're all, almost off the map there. We well, off the map one. there, yeah. essentially, yes. yeah. Yes. We have a slightly larger map here, a bit less mm. detailed, but, um, but, but, but slightly larger. So what we're talking about with this wisdom tooth, this is more minus 11 to 12 sort of value, is, is really this sort of band right up here, oh, just yeah. on the sort of southern edge of this, this junction between the green and the blue. Yes. But the fact that we've got this, this change uh, between early and late childhood, now that implies some kind of movement. Well, now, if we look at where that movement is most likely to have been, one begins to consider um, Scandinavia and Norway in particular, because mm. as you can see, the difference between those values in terms of geographical distance up there is not so dramatic. Yes, yes. I mean, given that coastal trade between towns in Norway would have been carried out by sea, I suppose you would expect a bit of mo movement of people there. I mean, obviously what's less expected is that somebody who ended up in Rivenhall Churchyard yeah, actually yeah. spent much, much of their early life um, in, in Scandinavia. But then, of um, course, we're talking about somebody from an eastern coastal, reasonably coastal location right. in the UK. Right. So I suppose maritime contact is, again, is not, not unexpected. I mean, it, the Norse connection is, is also quite interesting from the point of view of treponemal disease, syphilis and, and, and what have you. Yeah. I mean, the, the Norse are in North America yeah. four centuries before Columbus. So, you know, does this you know, bring up the mm. spectre of this North American mm. connection mm. again? I mean, we can't argue that um, you know, consistently because, of course, we, 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 we don't know how old she was when she yeah. actually got the disease. Yeah. I mean, That's did, the critical question. Exactly so. I mean, was it something she contracted in Scandinavia or was it something that she contracted when she arrived in, in, in Britain? Uh, I mean, that's an interesting question because it leaves open the question of whether um, syphilis or closely related diseases were endemic to Britain at that period or not. The more we know about the history and biology of diseases in the past, the more we may be able to use this information for interpreting what might happen into the future. The sequencing of Treponema pallidum's genome has opened the door to solving the mystery of the origin of syphilis. It has also offered hope of a vaccine that could one day wipe this ancient scourge from the planet. Until that day, one of the most successful of all pathogens continues to enjoy our human hospitality. If I wanted to be an infectious disease, I'd probably want to be a venereal disease. But there are lots of things that humans can avoid to avoid disease. But avoiding sexual intercourse is one of those things that is very difficult for human beings. I think the treponemes will have a very long and happy future. They're extraordinarily hard to work with. And I think we're not as close as we would like to think 
to developing a vaccine against the treponemes. I think they have lived with us for many, many thousands of years and will live with us for many years in the future. Thank you.